here is a uh, clip. This is from Saturday. Um, there are armed Trump supporters chanting stop the seal outside of the Michigan Secretary of State's home. Secretary of State's house and uh, the steel. Stop 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 the steal. You're a threat to democracy. You're a threat to free and honest elections. We love America. We love our rights and our freedoms. Now, um, this is a, uh, you know, we, we just got over talking about uh, the interview with our author today about um, this type of belief system. And now, now these people, let's be clear, they showed up with guns. I mean, I, I don't have necessarily a problem with protests like this. Showing up with guns and yelling you're a tyrant um, and also knowing the context in which that's said is uh, we're, we're, it's pretty borderline. Now, I would imagine we are going to see all those people who came out and talked about the horrors, the horrors that uh, Kristen uh, Nielsen, is that her name, uh, the, uh, of the Department of Homeland Security, suffered when she went to a restaurant and people came in and hmm. yelled at her. Yeah. Or when uh, some of these uh, Republican senators went into a restaurant and, and somebody yelled at them and said, you're horrible. Uh, it, like, I know that we're going to hear from those people who are going to be talking about these gun toting folks going with a megaphone to this person's house saying you're a tyrant and you're a felon and turn yourself in. Um, well, they've all been enabled one by by Trump, right? Michigan has become this boilerplate for MAGA mania, where one, they have a female governor who totally triggers them. I mean, there was a kidnapping plot that Trump normalized. And Jocelyn Benson, the secretary of state there, has been vocal about the count. She's been vocal alongside uh, Whitmer. And, I, you know, I think that specific part, the female leadership part, I like we can't underestimate how much that that really does yep. uh, make things more and more toxic. But also the fact that Trump normalized it on a national stage, um, did not uh, did not denounce the kidnapping plot of the of the governor there. There is the sense in MAGA land that this is some sort of tyrannical administration. And so it just takes that it, it allows them to skip 80 steps to go to the secretary of state's home and harass her because now there's no barrier in between jumping to that extreme. Yep. Well, and, and Trump isn't doing anything to lessen it as well. I mean, he oh, just keeps leaning in even more on the contrary. And, and, and to be, I mean, like the numbers, the official numbers came out last week. This election was closer than 2016 in key states. It was 80,000 votes in 2016. The divide was 40,000. So he is going to lean into that ever since those, I mean, we thought we, he was done, right? The fact that he's trying to appeal to the legislature in Michigan, the legislature is in Pennsylvania still at this point. I mean, that just shows you it's, it's, it's once those numbers came out and said, you know, between Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Arizona, it came down to 40,000 votes and, I, and Georgia, uh, 40,000 votes total divide. That's a real problem. And I think, you know, just to, to go back to neoliberalism here for a second, I think that if Biden doesn't address this, and if he does not address the crisis in the Democratic Party, if that after a four-year-long campaign, five-year-long campaign against Donald Trump and this right-wing extremism, this type of event is only going to grow. If the margins have only shrunk since then, then we have a real problem that goes beyond just like the most radical QAnon. It is something that is growing into the mainstream of the Democratic Party, so much so that DeSantis is an authoritarian. And in, Biden in the has Republican to take Party. In the, in the Republican, Republican Party. Party. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Yes. Um, I, part it, of the it, problem I would just point out quickly is uh, Tim Pool. Uh, here's what he said about Whitmer uh, back when that happened. Can you hear this? No. 
Oh, damn it. Okay, never mind. Just send me the link. I'll play it. Okay. What's interesting also, while we're waiting for this, you know, um, Whitmer and uh, the Secretary of State and the AG there, these are not Democrats. These are not progressive Democrats. Um, But what's interesting about them is they are partisan Democrats. They fight Republicans, they, like kind of the way Hillary would fight Republicans, they right? They'll go very, after them. Yeah. Well, I mean, even more so. Like, more I so. think yeah. they, they are aggressive from a partisan perspective that seems to sort of like, um, that seems, they seem to be of a younger, I don't know if they are necessarily, but they seem to be of the they younger are, yeah. generation that goes directly at uh, Republicans. Like at one point, it, it, it yeah. seemed that Whitmer early on in her administration, um, pre-COVID, was, was uh, you know, attempted to sort of cut a middle path and then found like, this ain't working. And she just um, got aggressive about it. And I think that is uh, at least a template. I mean, that type of, that that is, it seems to me, that kind of partisan um, approach is a prerequisite, it seems to me for uh, progressive ascendancy, because you need to di- you need to get rid of and, and sideline Republicans, you know. And um, it speaks to kind of what you're talking about, too, the conflation often of progressivism with fighting Republicans. Like, you can still be a more centrist, centrist Democrat and be aggressive towards Republicans. They are not one and the same. And it's important that we have more Democrats like Whitmer in the camp of the more centrist Democrats. I think after like the, the new Gingrich era, right. When, when they were in the Clintons and, and, and the new green Gingrich era fighting so hard and obviously the impeachment, everything just like, like Democrats froze after that. So afraid culminating in the 2000 election of not pushing back. Um, that there was just, I mean, I, I, I would love to say it was like some sort of neoliberal move, like it was a strategy. I mean, obviously on policy, they moved more conservative, but to to not demonize Republicans, like I think that kind of grew out of that, right? Am, am yeah, I Yeah, and I don't, it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't simply just a, a neoliberal thing. I mean, it, it was, it, 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 it became the default position of party politics uh, to downplay and, uh, and, and any differences, even for those who had, you know, sort of extreme policy differences. Um, and I mean, you know, think about how, um, you know, and I don't want to, uh, I can't remember his name now. He was, um, was a lawyer from Florida, Stoller worked for him. Um, and he was, uh, a very, um, oh gosh, I can't remember his name. Uh, but he is the one who said, you know, the Republican plan for health care is for you to die uh, on the floor. Of the, uh, uh, Alan, the um, yes. Alan. Gosh, I can't believe I can't remember his Grayson. name. Yeah, it's Grayson. Grayson. And, um, the ties, the ties. And, <laughs> and, and the shoes. And Grayson. And, um, you know, I don't know. I don't know enough about his work to know whether he was a workhorse or show horse type of thing. But there is like an association with like, you know, being bombastic and rhetorically throwing um, and matching the Republican style with a disdain amongst the Democratic Party. Uh, Now, often that become, you know, is a function of uh, sometimes of the politics that they're trying to promote. But I think, you know, that style of like, let's just keep our heads down a little bit and appeal to the sort of, you know, uh, you know, uh, and, and part of that also, and, and I, I don't know if this is a learned helplessness on behalf of Democratic voters, but Democratic voters also wanted Democratic politicians to, to compromise more. Uh, and I think um, in, in terms of the polls, and I think Democratic politicians saw that as, and maybe misread that as like, we shouldn't point out the differences uh, because they want compromise. And, and and I just also think that like people can say they don't want people to fight in politics, but um, as, as a voter or as a supporter, but I think when push comes to shove, if one, one party is fighting and the other isn't, it's not going to do well for the party that's not fighting. It's just not. Well, I mean, that's sort of like the Rahm Emanuel strategy, you know, pre 
pre mayor, pre um, Obama, he was the head of the DCCC. And he ran the strategy of, of for to, to win over swing districts of just that. He kind of, I mean, it's not like it didn't exist before, but he really leaned into, you know, Democrats acting like Republicans and, and pretending they don't exist and just being the same exact candidate in swing districts. Like that yes. was his model. Yes. The only time he got aggressive was with the left. Literally. I mean, people say <laughs> no, that all true. the time, but 100%. that is, that is just, that is just true. And it's not even like, it's not even the, you know, it was, it was in, you know, the left is even not left as, as it is today, uh, frankly. Um, 